Girl with a Pearl Earring meets augmented reality. It was made possible thanks to a collaboration between museums that host Vermeer's work and Google Arts and Culture. The online platform has just launched a free app called Meet Vermeer that features all of the Dutch artists' paintings. The virtual museum is accessible to anyone who owns a smartphone and allows them to approach each work and examine it very closely. Its developers hope the app will urge people to go and see the actual works themselves. Joining us now to talk more about the Meet Vermeer virtual exhibit is Emily Kordenke. She's a director of the Moritz House, where Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring is on permanent display. Emily, welcome to Showcase. Hello, glad to be here. So, Emily, my first question is, obviously, Vermeer is a legendary artist, but we've never really seen all of his works together in a retrospective exhibition. Why is that? Well, it's an impossibility because some of the paintings are too fragile to travel, meaning if you leave, if you move them out of their museums, they would probably do damage, be damaged. Um, some of them are not allowed to leave their museums because they were left to the museum with a stipulation in the will that they cannot go anywhere. You can think of the paintings in the Frick collection. And finally, one of the works in the project uh, was stolen in 1990. So we don't know where it is. So this artwork that was stolen in 1990 is also included within the project. How did that happen? Because you don't know where it is. Well, I wish I knew the answer. Uh, the issue is that it was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in 1990, and we've never found out who did it or where the painting is. Uh, there was also a Rembrandt stolen at that time. But we do have a reasonably good photograph of it, so we were able to include that in our virtual meet premiere. How did you manage to photograph the paintings in such high quality? Well, one of the great things about this partnership was that Google knows a lot about technology and they know how to do this sort of thing. And they developed a camera that sort of rides around in the museum and does this very uh, super high resolution photography. Um, so for those paintings that we did not have that high res photography, Google contributed that to the project. Um, some of them, like one of ours, had already been photographed on that high resolution. So it was a bit of a combination. How did you come up with the idea of the project? Because obviously augmented reality is still quite new to the art world. Did you have any sort of reservations about it? Well, it's funny. Uh, Google came to us uh, at the Mars House some years ago and they said, you know, we really want your collection on our arts and culture platform. And that went back and forth for a while, a couple of times. And then we, we, I said to them, you know, I think there's a real opportunity here because when you look at a screen with um, reproductions, you don't get any sense of the scale, the size of the pictures. Uh, all you see are little images. And after a long while, we came to the actually the idea that the best way to give you a sense of scale as a visitor would be to do it in this way, using augmented reality. So how is it going so far? Did you meet your expectations? Well, it's going great. I got to say, I mean, it's just a very young project. Um, there's a lot of information on the web part of it, on the app, uh, but also on the web. So I've seen uh, at least 50,000 viewers for some of the YouTube films on the project. So that's going great. And then for the AR, um, we're just waiting to see how many people are actually using it. I did get some emails from friends of mine who said they kept bumping into furniture when they were walking around with their phone, which is good. Means they were using it. <laughs> Emily, do you think augmented reality is maybe the future of art? Well, I think there is a place for it. Uh, this is a very good example of why it's useful. It does something in the virtual world that you could never do in the actual world. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I think there will be more projects like this in the future. That having been said, nothing beats the experience of seeing the actual object and seeing it in the place where it normally hangs. Um, I am of the opinion that the more you share with people, whether it's on the virtual platform or information, the more attractive the prospect of seeing the, the real work of art becomes. So we expect and what we hope is that people will know to find us uh, in The Hague at the Moritz House when they want to know more about Vermeer, but Rembrandt and some of the other Dutch masters. And that if they have the means and the time that they will come and see us. So why would people come and see, say, Girl with the Pearl Earring in real life after visiting your virtual gallery? What's the point? 
Well, this is exactly right. So the experience that you get through the app is is a fiction. It's a virtual. It's not the actual experience. And you will find that when you do come and you see the girl in her natural home, in that wonderful house that we, the museum is in a 17th century building with uh, everything that's around it, you know, the outside and the whole experience of going through a museum. That's a very different thing from what you can find on the internet or even through uh, an augmented reality app. Thank you so much, Emily, for joining us on Showcase today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.